Hi everyone, this is Valerie and this is one more video from Justly team that will help you grow your business. Today we are going to focus on NPS. Well, you know we are in love with metrics and uh, NPS is one more metric we are paying attention to and advise you to do the same. So this is the video, the brief introduction to NPS, also known as Net Promoter Score. And let's start. What is a Net Promoter Score? Well, basically that is a parameter that helps you understand how loyal your customers are and how exactly they are in love with your brand. So either in love or not. The NPS actually helps you to divide all your users into three categories. So the categories are detractors, passives, and promoters, also known as ambassadors of your brand. So Net Promoter Score is actually something that helps you alter your marketing strategy, alter your customer support, also the accounting, and variety of communication with your customers. Why you need it? First of all, to avoid high churn rate. Then you're also going to use Net Promoter Score to enhance your communication with your customers. And it is also a way to bring even more customers to your business, which means Net Promoter Score helps you understand why your customers are in love with your brand, if they are ready to recommend it to, to the world or not. Well, that is very precious information to navigate in the ocean of other companies. Well, Net Promoter Score is usually defined from zero to 10, where zero is detractors and 10 is promoters. To define what level is your customers at, you're going to run various types of communication activities or probably a survey or a call or an interview, well, whatever you might have. And the information is going to help you understand where the majority of your customers are and uh, what you should do with the rest. So to define the Net Promoter Score, you're going probably to launch a variety of pop-up windows in order to get the previous information. Or you might also invite your customers to have a call with you. Or you can ask your accounting team to have conversation with your customers. Well, customer support can also contribute to this process. And you might also run a number of uh, conversations via chat window. But let us focus on the main points of the Net Promoter Score process of getting the information. Well, first of all, Net Promoter Score is something that you are going to measure dynamically. I mean to say that Net Promoter Score does give you the information once you've measured it, so you get the numbers, and you're also going to do one more session of the Net Promoter Score measurement after some period of time. So the period of time really depends on the life cycle of your product. For example, a typical user is actually into your product for a year, so which means the life cycle of your product for them is also a year. Well, you're going to divide this period of time into some crucial moments, like for example, the first two months, then next six months, and then some other period of time, right? So probably you're going to have three touch points to measure the Net Promoter Score. The longer life cycle of your product is, the less frequent Net Promoter Score information you're going to get. Next, very important thing is to understand who you're getting the information from. So segmentation is a very powerful thing here. Let me give you an example. Once you are measuring the Net Promoter Score, definitely you are going to divide all the groups of users into different groups. So uh, for instance, those who have been with you for, let's say, five years, those who have recently joined your product. Well, these two groups are completely different. I'm sure you might have some more, but please pay attention that the NPS should be measured differently with every segment of your users. It's very important. And the final important thing about Net Promoter Score is, uh, well, I've already told you about the frequency, right? But this time you should pay attention to 
the moment when you are going to launch the NPS survey. For instance, you might have several important milestones on the customer journey and probably you're going to have the NPS survey after a certain milestone. For example, they have activated few of the features of your product and now it's time to measure the NPS. Or they have subscribed to your product for another period and it is also the time when you can measure the NPS. Well, quite many of the points can be there, so you should understand when is it the perfect time, the perfect moment for you to go to your customers and give them the NPS survey. Well, again, you are going to use pop-up windows, live chat bubbles, emails and whatnot. Once you have all the information received, you're going to analyze it, you're going to see how many detractors, passives and promoters you have. What is next? Next, you're going to work on the communication strategy. That is not only about the marketing, that is also about the sales, the accounting, customer support, of course. So this information is going to give you food for thought and you're going to alter some processes in your company to get even more promoters. So go and measure NPS with your customers and plan the activities. I've personally always believed that NPS is, well, probably the most insightful process that you can have. And uh, the overall information from your customers gives you, well, plenty of ideas how you can grow and improve your business. That is it for today. Measure NPS, get to know your NPS, get to know your promoters, passives, detractors, and plan accordingly. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give the reaction to it. And also, we are telling a lot about the ways to improve your business and to grow your metrics. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you know somebody who is actually interested in this type of information, don't forget to share the video with them. See you!